Sex is the life force energy that runs through us all. Can you use sexual energy for your spiritual evolution or perhaps for emotional healing? Is it even possible? Clinical sexologist Dr. Martha Tara Lee will explore all these and more on Eros Evolution on Om Times Radio. Good morning, this is Dr. Martha Tara Lee and this is Eros Evolution. I'm a clinical sexologist based in Singapore and my company is called Eros Coaching. That's E-R-O-S coaching.com. And every week I have a different guest. Last week I summarized the past 13 episodes and today we have Urban Tantra. Urban Tantra is a modern tantra, tantra practice inclusive of and appropriate for everyone. In today's show, we'll be talking about sex, gender, spirituality, the importance of aesthetic experiences, BDSM, and why gender and sexual preferences are no longer limited to men and women. I have with me somebody I've been looking forward to have on this show for a very long time, and she is my teacher, Barbara Carella. She's the author of Urban Tantra, Sacred Sex for the 21st Century, Ecstasy is Necessary, A Practical Guide to Sex Relationships, and oh, so much more. And also, another book, Luxurious Loving. So she has three books. She is the founder of Urban Tantra, an approach to sacred sexuality that adapts and blends a wide variety of conscious sexuality practices from Tantra to BDSM. And also the Urban Tantra Professional Training Program, which I attended, a a comprehensive training program in the practice and application of conscious sexuality. Her pioneering Urban Tantra workshops were named Best in New York City by Time Out New York Magazine. Barbara brings a holistic, metaphysical, practical, humorous, entertaining and gender fluid approach to conscious, conscious sexuality and to all her work. Her books, workshops, lectures and coaching sessions are an eclectic mix of sexual and spiritual practices designed to encourage readers and participants of all sexual preferences and genders to expand their capacity for both pleasure and spiritual fulfillment. Barbara is the graduate of Coney Island Sideshow School with a double major in snake handling and fire eating. I kid you not. <laughs> I just looked it up and this place really exists and they really do this training. So she's a person of many talents and welcome to the show, Babler. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Martha. <laughs> I love that you included my Coney Island Sideshow School credit. I'm very proud of that. <laughs> I thought this is just one of the things you made up, but no, it's a no. real thing. It's absolutely true. <laughs> you didn't do any fire eating for me in the class. I'm sorry about that. We're going to have to get together again. Actually, I, I actually now I have more and more rituals that include fire. I'm really quite fond of it, but I, I, I don't spit fire in every workshop. It can frighten people, you know? I, I, I think I would have been freaked out. Yeah, I don't blame you. We, we save it for special occasions. <laughs> so I just want to make sure I announce your website. It's barbaracarellas.com. That's it's dot yes, it's barbaracarellas.com. dot com. Yeah, yes. that's C A R R E L L A S. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so people can check you out. So tell us about Urban Tantra. What is it, and what? How did it come about? Well, Urban Tantra came about um, rather by accident. I was a Broadway producer working in the uh, in the theater in on Broadway in New York City. Uh, in the 1980s. And as many people know, the 1980s were a very bleak and difficult time for sex and sexuality uh, because of the AIDS crisis. Yeah. And be, if anyone in California, in San Francisco in particular, LA or New York, were particularly hard hit by the AIDS crisis because of the population, the large populations of gay men. And I was in the theater, so that was perhaps even a bit more intense. And 
I went to a support group because it was very, very, very challenging in those days. Mm -hmm. By by the mid 80s, I was losing sometimes as many as four friends, acquaintances or colleagues a week. And it was just very hard to handle that much loss and that much grief. I went to a support group. Mm -hmm. At that support group, I met um, Annie Sprinkle, yeah. now the founder of Ecosexuality as a Performance Art. Yeah. And Joseph Kramer, the founder of Sexological Body Work, whom I know you studied with as yeah. well. Yeah. And our big question back then, well, I suppose we had many, but one really big question was, what are we going to do about sex? Because when everybody stops being quite so terrified, they're all, we all are going to go back to having risky sex and this plague is just going to go on and on and on. Mm. So we, we also were very much in need of a spiritual practice. Um, I think many of us, uh, sex, gender, uh, radicals and pioneers and outlaws, felt pretty abandoned by whatever, uh, by other people's God. Uh, we were told in America, we had a horrible president, Ronald Reagan at the time, uh, who, who, who very much supported the idea that, um, well, he was either silent or supported the idea that this was all our fault, punishment for our wanton behavior. And none of us wanted to hang out with a God like that. So we were without one, most of us. Mm. And Joseph had already started studying Taoist sexuality, which Taoist sexuality is actually a branch of Chinese medicine. And Annie and I were hearing about Tantra and running into people practicing Tantra, many of whom had been at Osho's ashram in Pune at the time. Mm. And we learned quickly that in Eastern spiritualities and, uh, and well, in the case of Taoism, Chinese medicine, that sex was more of an energy, more like an energy you could cultivate and allow than it was uh, something you did. In America, sex is very much how to have an orgasm in this many steps, how, 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 you know, very much about action, mm. not very much about allowing. And so we were interested, and, and it, Tantra had a philosophical slash spiritual connection, background, and basis. So we wondered, was there something here? Well, Tantra had, be, had been introduced to America actually around the beginning of the 1900s, and it got kind of mixed up with Aleister Crowley and sex magic, but... It, it existed, and it was growing in popularity in the 80s, and I, Annie and I started exploring it. Now, in those days, Tantra was a very white, middle-aged, middle-class, heterosexual game. <laughs> mm. uh, we were usually, no, I would say oh, we were always the only same-sex couple there. Now, Annie and I had been lovers briefly, but at this stage, we were really co-explorers. Mm -hmm. We would go to a Tantra workshop and we would, let's say, learn a heart connection or a breath or a chant or a way to move energy. And if it worked for us, we would take it back to our support group, largely gay men, and we would share it with them and see if it worked for them, see if it helped them. So our, sist our way of learning Tantra was quite practical. Yeah. We would read something or practice something or learn something from a teacher who was passing through New York. Thank goodness we were in New York because mm -hmm. uh, a lot of cool, wonderful, smart yes. people passed through. And if it worked, we kept it. We expanded on it. We ran with it. If it didn't, we just let it go and moved on to the next thing. So our brand of Tantra was pretty eclectic. It was not rooted in one, uh, you know, we were not the follower of a particular lineage. And Tantra is, has been a lineage-based system. So when a reporter many years later, I guess in the 90s, late 90s, 
mm-hmm. asked me, well, what kind of Tantra was I doing? I didn't want to get into cultural appropriation, good, for goodness knows, and I certainly didn't want um, to claim that I was doing traditional Tantra per se. So I said, well, my, it's kind of a urban Tantra. Mm. And that's what stuck. Yeah. So what urban Tantra is, is my and my now my communities um, envisioning, some would say radical re-envisioning, of a Tantra practice suited for the modern spiritual erotic seeker. Beautiful. It can pretty much be used by anyone. Um, it doesn't matter who you love or who you're attracted to or who you are, what gender or mix of genders or style of genders. Um, it's designed for the modern spiritual erotic seeker. Mm, great. Thank you so much for sharing how Urban Tantra came about. We are with Barbara Corellas, and she is the founder and author of the book Urban Tantra. She's also my teacher for the program Urban Tantra Professional Training. And she just talked about how she first coined Urban Tantra. And she just corrected this common misconception that Tantra is only for heterosexuals when actually it is for people of all genders and sexual preferences and not limited to men or women. And you can check out her website. That's barbaracarellas.com. That's C-A-R-R-E-L-L-A-S. And you can check out all the other trainings and dates where she will be traveling to. In the meantime, you may also want to check out her book on Amazon, Urban Tantra. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Vibe Nation Radio is brought to you by Carrie Turcott and Dean Thomas. Each week we bring a refreshing outlook to lifting the veils of illusion that occur in our daily lives. We will share our own learnings and personal experience that allow others to understand who they truly are. At the end of each show, Carrie will be tapping into the listeners' energies just to give an idea of what to expect for the week ahead. So join us each Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern, and together we will discover the inner keys that will unlock the true you. Hi, this is Julie Geigel. I'm Maggie Chula. And I'm Catherine Glass. And we're the Psychic Angel Channelers. Join us every week here on Ohm Times Radio for Angel Talk Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. The angels have heard your call and are here to help. Are you ready to receive? Remember your magnificence with Angel Talk Tuesday. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back to the show. We are with Barbara Corellas and we're talking about Urban Tantra. Urban Tantra is not woo-woo. It's something that is practical, eclectic, and 
it is something that really works for one and all of all ages, races, nationalities, genders, and sexual preferences. And we were just talking about what Urban Tantra is about and how it came about. And uh, I met you, Barbara, in the Urban Tantra professional training program in Australia, maybe right. four years ago. And yeah. I, I heard that you've added a new and exciting piece to the program. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, I, I founded the Urban Tundra Professional Training Program actually kind of for a, a selfish reason. I wanted to create a community of strong, talented, um, brilliant, far-thinking people, of which you are most certainly one, because I wanted to hang out in that kind of community. Mm-hmm. So the training program is based on Well, everything I've done in my life, both my practical business skills, my spiritual seeking, and what I've learned about sex. And in that, as you'll remember, Martha, we uh, did, we learned and then did practice the erotic awakening massage. There's an erotic awakening massage for people with penises and an erotic awakening massage for people with pussies. Yeah. Um, I specifically didn't say men and women because as we're now beginning to realize, not every woman has a vulva and vagina. Some have penises and not every person with a penis uh, considers themselves a man. Not every woman with a pussy considers themselves a person with a pussy considers themselves a woman. So... Mm -hmm. I had been asked by the transgender and non-binary community to create something for people who did not have a male or female identity, who called themselves non-binary or genderqueer uh, or trans. And I thought about that and thought, well, if we take away gender and, you know, I'll go back in time a little bit. For a long time, I had been thinking that genitals do not mean gender. They don't equal gender. My teaching partner, Chester Maynard, we spent many years teaching in Australia in the 90s. The more genitals we saw and touched, the more it all just seemed like all the same erotic jelly in different jello molds. And that, in fact, men and women were not that different, even erotically. So I went back to that early mem- em- memory and went, well, what could we do with that? And what I wound up doing was looking not at what we call that and our assumptions about how that genital works. For instance, the assumptions frequently are that penises are active and vulvas are and vaginas are receptive. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not true. A pussy can be very active and a penis could be very receptive. So if we strip away everything we know or think we know about genitals, including how they like to be touched, what would happen? So I asked the participants to look at what all genitals have in common. They have a frenulum, a space where inner lips come together, which is also the most sensitive spot on the penis. They all have a urethral opening. They all have a glands. They have shaft. They have legs. They have bulbs. Um, Scrotum is equivalent to outer labia. Penis, the shaft of a penis is equivalent to the shaft of a clitoris. The head of a penis is equivalent, this is all tissue wise, nerve and tissue wise, to the head of a clitoris. And the rape, the little seam like looking thing on the underside of the penis, is equivalent to an inner labia. Anyway, if we just know that and take away all the names, What if we approached erotic massage or approached touching genitals as though we didn't know what we would expect? We didn't know what we would find. What if we approached it from, I wonder if this bit here likes some pressure. I wonder if it likes um, vibration 
better. I wonder what would happen if I stretched this a little or massaged this or scratched it or tapped it or did circular strokes or did this a little harder, all in conversation with the person who was receiving. And it was pretty remarkable. It was pretty remarkable. We eliminated, uh, we, and, and it, it takes a little practice to intentionally forget everything you think you knew about genitals because yet you don't really forget it. You just take away the names and you take away the assumptions. But of course we have a rough idea of how some bit of flesh might respond. We have some experience, but by taking away our assumptions about gender, we went to this lovely place where, oh, how to describe it, where there were no assumptions, where mm. everything was based on communication and fun. Yeah. And sort of an intentional naivete. Mm. And it's that intentional naivete that I found where I, where we all seem to find a place of great freedom and mindfulness because you have to be exquisitely present if you're taking away assumptions. You know what I mean? Yes. Beautiful. It's like going into the land of the unknown and looking at everything with fresh lenses. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Beautiful. So you facilitate that piece uh, now in Urban Tantra professional training. Yes, that is a new piece in the professional training program. And at the end of the program, I'll give you specific dates. But our next training is in New York City in June. And there are still a few spots open. So I would really love to see some creative, outlaw-driven, <laughs> mm, yeah. fabulous teachers, educators, therapists, artists um, who want to approach sex from a professional angle. I'd love to see them in New York in June. Mm. Don't you think though, that Tantra has, has expanded a lot in the past few years? I mean, look what you're doing with orgasmic yoga. I think that's <laughs> very tied to Tantra. Don't you? Yeah. I've, uh, taken what I've learned from Joseph Kramer and pulled everything that I've learned, including from you into, into this book. And um, I myself uh, practice orgasmic yoga so as to be more in my body and to have expanded orgasms. So uh, I think uh, a lot of people are very curious about Tantra. And uh, how do you think it has uh, evolved and, and why? I think that, well, in my world anyway, but in the world in general, as I travel around it, I mm -hmm. am noticing that Tantra has become more inclusive which from the way I learn Tantra makes sense. By inclusive, I mean of, of people, as you said, of all genders, races, sexual preferences. But inclusive, Tantra for me, my understanding of Tantra, um, big picture, beyond just sex, is that Basically, Tantra teaches us that if we go mindfully, totally, completely, passionately into any aspect of life, we can experience a divine, a personal divine transformation from that. Um, sex is just um, a particularly fun way in, but it's not the only one, but it's, it's certainly a pleasant one. And I think people are drawn to the fact that, well, I think people have an inner knowing that ton that sex can be a spiritual experience mm. if practiced really consciously. And I think recently people who practice their sex consciously, whether or not they call it Tantra, they might call it bondage. They might call it sadomasochism. They might call it BDSM, but there are people who practice BDSM in a manner that I would absolutely call tantric. And certainly in my workshops and the professional training program, we look at BDSM, power exchange, for example, sensation from a tantric perspective. And I think instead of 
Tantra and BDSM being two opposite things on either end of a very long hallway, we're starting to see that it's all a circle or a spiral and that anything done with intention, consciousness, breath, present, presence, lots of love and awareness can be a tantric practice, including BDSM. And I think it was a Western mistake to assume that Tantra was a soft, fluffy, woo-woo practice. The, the research I have done, which is not academically ex- extensive, but I do a lot of reading and exploration, um, Tantra, as I understand it, was a pretty radical, transgressive kind of thing. Uh, back in its original founding in India. And I think we're just bringing some of that transgressiveness back, which, which I like. I, 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 I want my spiritual practice to have some teeth, to have some guts, to have some edges. I like it better rough. <laughs> <laughs> I also think, by the way, that um, speaking of your orgasmic yoga, I also think there's a lot of room in Tantra for solo practice. And I think that gets ignored. And I think it's an unfortunate that that gets ignored. Mm. Because I think a lot of what, uh, what I know when I first learned Tantra, it wasn't, yes, I, uh, Annie and I partnered a lot, but much of the work I did on my own. And that's where I really understood it in my body. As, as I'm sure you've discovered in your orgasmic your yoga practice, it's for you. Beautiful. So more with Barbara after this break. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Eros Evolution is where sexuality and spirituality meets. Join me, clinical sexologist Martha Tara Lee, on Eros Evolution on Thursdays, 4 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio. Have you bought into the idea that you have to work hard for your money, that business is hard? I will share some dynamic access consciousness tools to get you out of your own way so you can create a business that actually succeeds. Join me, Simone Millicers, on The Joy of Business at 4 p.m. Mondays Eastern. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. What if business could be fun? What if business is the adventure of living? What are you choosing? Where do you do business that makes it easier, more fun, or more joyful for you? We'd love to see where you do business. Connect with us on Instagram at Joy of Business or Twitter at Joy of Business. And share your pictures with hashtags Business Done Where and Joy of Business. Let's change the world with business. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back to the show. You are listening to Arrows Evolution on the Om Times Radio Network. And you can share the show with your friends by sending them the link omtimes.com forward slash mobile. With this link, your friends will be able to listen to the show without needing to download any app. We are with Barbara Carellas and we are talking about Urban Tantra today. And just before the show, she was explaining to us how Tantra has become more inclusive over the years and it has become more than just sex, of course. It's about being mindful and passionate in life. And from there, we will be able to experience divine transformation. This inner knowing that sex can be spiritual is something that can be practiced not not just in Tantra, but also extends to bondage when it is done in a way that is conscious. 
So coming back to the show, uh, um, Barbara, I was just curious. You have written an entire book about ecstatic experiences called Ecstasy is Necessary. So this, is, uh, this was a third book and I've also read it. I think everything that you do is fabulous. So what do you, what do you, why do you think um, aesthetic experiences are important? I wanted two, two, two questions there, at least the one, I heard two questions. <laughs> I wanted to write about, I heard the one you didn't ask me, Martha. Uh, <laughs> um, I wanted to write about ecstatic experiences because I wanted to find a new way of talking about sexuality and spirituality ecstasy as a word as a concept if you go back especially in like roman catholic tradition they all state uh, certain saints were many saints were frequently in ex- ecstasy they were in um states that like S- saint sebastian is considered one of the kinkiest in the bdsm community because saint sebastian has this quite an orgasmic look on his <laughs> face as he's being like whatever they did to him i don't know my catholic mythology very well but there has <laughs> ex- ecstasy has always had a spiritual component for sure but it's also had an erotic component and frequently they exist simultaneously now when I say erotic, I don't necessarily mean sexual. And when I say spiritual, I don't necessarily mean religious. But peak experiences often have this, you know, like people say when something amazing is happening, oh my God, frequently have this, oh my God, seeing God, feeling God quality to them. Mm-hmm. So why are they important? I think think they are the most effective ways to shift our perspective. Years ago, Louise Hay talked about the totality of possibilities. She gave this talk in um, Louise Hay, the author of You Can Heal Your Life and many other books. She gave this talk in, I think, 1988, right in the middle of the AIDS crisis. And the totality of possibilities for her included a cure for AIDS. Now we're not quite there, but um, certainly we have found ways to cope with AIDS that were unheard of at the time. They were outside our, what we, what we could imagine was possible in the day. An ecstatic experience, imagine you're standing under a low ceiling and that low ceiling is what you think is possible for you or your loved ones or your community. An ecstatic experience blows the top, blows that ceiling apart, shatters it, revealing a much, 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 much higher sky or ceiling where a whole lot more is possible. Um, one of the fa- my favorite ways to introduce people to ecstatic experiences that are not just genital orgasms, nothing wrong with genital orgasms, just trying to get people to go a little broader with their ecstatic experience um, is with breath orgasms. When people realize that they can have a full body orgasm like experience just by breathing, Mm -hmm. it shatters that low ceiling of possibility. And suddenly, oh my God, if this is possible, what else is possible? So I wanted to write a book that included sex, but wasn't just about sex because I think that you, I'm sure you've noticed this in your professional practice. Haven't you noticed that there is like, um, we have made like women's lack of desire an illness, something that we have to cure with a pill or a therapy or whatever. Yeah. And it's not necessarily our attitude, but people come to us looking to be fixed. Mm. And I wanted to suggest that we weren't broken, that we might be having ecstatic experiences in our career or in our art, or when we listen to music or when we're out on nature and if we were, or when we're eating delicious food. Yeah, food is a big one. It was huge. It was huge, that in nature. 
Um, because I did a survey of people. Um, and food and, food and nature, huge. And I wanted to suggest that ecstatic experiences could be found in all areas of life. I suppose this probably stemmed from the fact that, you know, people frequently think Tantra is all about sex, and it's not. Well, ecstatic experiences are a lot bigger than just sex. And it's not up to me to say, you have to have your ecstasy in this particular way or you're broken. I wanted to really, really, really... Um, stop that, put an end to that way of thinking. So um, in the book, I encourage people to look at all the different ways they might create ecstasy in their life. Not just happiness, because I don't know what that is, frankly, but very specific ways to encounter ecstasy and as importantly, very specific ways to create ecstatic experiences and to avoid things that kept us from me. This is really, I'm really talking about me. I realized that I could go through life certain days, certain weeks, certain months, pretty much eliminating the possibility of an ecstatic experience. And I looked at all the things I did wrong. I looked at all the mistakes I'd made. I looked at all the times I could have chosen pleasure or ecstasy or ease, and I made another choice. Mm. And I really wrote a book about how I messed up and how I'd like to do better. <laughs> and I guess a whole lot of other people mess up the way I used to, the way I still can mess up. And because the book seems to strike a chord with a whole lot of people especially those who are uh, maybe coming out of a breakup or coming out of some other rough patch and want to learn how to take a risk, want to be able to talk more easily to a partner, things like that. Want to, want to make choices that are going to lead to not just pleasure, but ecstatic transformation. They want to change the, the, the happy ecstatic way instead of the hard, slogging, punishing way. Um, speaking of which, I mentioned breath orgasms. Yeah. I'm sometimes known as the thinking off lady because some yeah. years ago, a television program on, on the American Discovery Channel um, asked if I would do a, an episode called How to Think Off. I went, well, you know, it's not really thinking off. It's just a non-genital breath orgasm. They said, that's what we mean. We mean no <laughs> genitals. I went, okay. I mean, I think it is possible to think off. I've done it. I, I've been able to create an orgasm with just a thought, but I think it's easier and more reliable and even more fun to do it with breath because I think it creates a bigger experience. So anyway, mm -hmm. uh, a whole lot of people have gotten a lot of ecstatic benefit from this technique. So I just wanted to let the listeners know that if you want some free written instructions on how to have an energy orgasm, if you go to barbaracarellis.com yeah. and sign up for my newsletter, mm -hmm. you will get back uh, a link to free instructions on how to have an energy orgasm at home. If you want a little more help, um, on my YouTube ch YouTube channel, you will see me doing a brief demonstration and explanation of how to have an energy orgasm. Mm -hmm. And along with that newsletter sign up gifts, you also get um, my sexual permission slip. Because I think when somebody asked me a while back, what is it you do exactly? And I said, you know, all I do is give people permission and possibilities. They do the rest. I bet you can probably relate to that in your practice too, Martha. I love what you're saying, permission and possibilities. Ooh. I, I would think that that's pretty much a lot of what you do in Eris coaching as well, right? Yeah, I do. Um, uh, you know, I I'm, I'm in a very different place where people are not even functioning. They don't even know how to have sex. <laughs> So oh, wow. I think a lot of it is well, not you even... give them permission and possibilities then? I, I, I don't know about possibilities. I think a lot of times it feels like instructions. 
Okay, I want you to think about that as possibilities, though. I hear you. I think sometimes instructions are possibilities mm. when you didn't even know where to start. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think that's super, super, super important. I really love your sexual permission slip. Yeah, thank you. You know, I created it as a, kind of a performance piece. I was doing a, a class for New York City teenagers, high school kids. And I wanted something that told, gave them permission, but also permission to be safe. Permission to do everything they wanted to do and nothing they didn't want to do. And I wanted it in kind of a rant, kind of a poetry slam sort of way. Um, so, so that they would listen to me. So now I turned it into, at the time it was, I give you permission to do this, 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 this. And now I turned it into uh, a set of affirmations. So you get to say, I give myself permission to have sex only when I want to. I give myself permission to love myself more. I give myself permission, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, that's free when you sign up for my newsletter as well. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. We are with Barbara Carellas and we're talking about urban tantra. She just explained to us what ecstasy meant and why her book, Ecstasy is Necessary, focus on ecstasy and the link between spirituality and sexuality. There's so much richness in what she's sharing and um, I hope uh, listeners are curious about what a breath orgasm is about. You can go sign up at her website, Barbara Carellas, and you will receive a link to the to instructions on how to have a breath orgasm and also her sexual permission slip. So be sure to check out her website. And more after this break. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Searching for a perspective beyond the mainstream? Check it out. Join your hosts, Cielito Pascual and Diana Gold Holland, on Share International Radio for thought provoking views behind the news. Sundays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, on Ohm Times Radio. You can also find us at shareontheairradio.org. This may be the message of hope you've been waiting for. the world if you're broke. I know. I tried. Isn't it time you turned your life's calling into a profitable, freedom-based business? I'm Michelle Barr. Join me every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern for Sacred Success. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Ohm Times Radio. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Welcome back to the last segment of Arrow's Evolution. 
and we are with Barbara Corrales talking about urban tantra today. She's one of the best people I can think of to talk about the link between sexuality and spirituality. And be sure to ch- check out her three books and also her website, barbaracorrales.com. So, Barbara, <laughs> it's, a, it's funny to be able to just call you by your first name like that. <laughs> Because I have so much respect and admiration for you. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's true. <laughs> all my all, all my graduates are my friends. Remember that. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, my you're colleagues. So, yeah, you're so supportive. You know, you 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 have been so encouraging, and you wrote a little um uh, thing for my uh, book, uh, Orgasmic Yoga, as well. So I'm very very grateful for how you're open very and welcome. warm. Amazing. I don't know how you do it all. I, I just, I guess you just must not sleep because there just aren't enough hours in the day for everything that you do, Dr. Martha. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm busy. You put me to shame. No way. No, no. <laughs> so uh, just for listeners out there, what's next for you and Urban Tantra? Oh, a couple of exciting things. I'll just mention some of the workshops first so anybody who's been listening yeah. might want to join me. And then I'll tell you about something really exciting that uh-huh. um, I've been doing. Uh, I've got two Urban Tantra one-day workshops. This is my introductory course. Um, they're one day long in New York City mm. for anyone. Anyone and everyone. You don't have to be in a couple you can be any gender, any sexual preference. You can come in a gr- group if that's what your relationship structure looks like. Everybody's welcome. It's on the 26th of March and the 22nd of May. And this is 2016 for when this goes into podcast. Uh, and then I'm really, really excited to bring my Urban Tantra professional training program back to New York City from the 11th to the 16th of June. Um, it will also be in Australia this year from the 1st through 6th of November in Sydney. And the professional training program is six days long and it's for sexuality professionals or frankly, people who want to approach sex like a professional. We've had doctors, therapists, sex workers, pro doms, tantricas, spiritual seekers, artists, um, storytellers, just about every, yoga teachers, just about everyone has found their way to the program for, for one reason or another. And, uh, it gives us a chance to go really, really deep. And what I love is that those six days are just the introduction and the welcoming into a really, really strong, supportive community. Uh, The course continues after you've left because if you need support in something, your business you're starting or in some personal journey, or maybe you're traveling around the world and need some people to hang out with or even someone to stay with, practical things like that, or help publicizing a workshop or a training or whatever, it all happens within our our private community and our private Facebook group. Um, and I love it because I get to meet fabulous new people and it makes me feel less alone in the world, less alone in this work. I think um, that this is, anytime you're talking about sexuality and spirituality, you're in brave new territory. As, as you said, Martha, you know, Many times we're just giving people information that, frankly, they should have learned in school, but we don't live in that culture. Other times we're helping people heal through incredibly intense, uh, from incredibly intense backgrounds. Uh, it, it's, it's, and it can be lonely work, especially where working with sexuality is illegal as it is in the United States. So we all really appreciate uh, or, or much work with sexuality, hands-on work with sexuality is largely illegal in the United States, to be clear. Uh, and we all uh, need the support of our friends, as, as you can imagine. What I'm doing... Oh, there's one more, sorry. I also created, for people who wanted more than one day but less than six, 
I created an, a weekend intensive called the Urban Tantra Experience. The next Urban Tantra Experience, which, um, and there are different, all different flavors of Urban Tantra Experience. This year, the flavor is breath, sensation, and magical sex. And those will next be happening in London in September, again, 2016, and Stockholm, Sweden, also in September. And I'll be listing more on my workshop as, as they come up. I also wanted to, to talk a little bit about um, a new project I'm working on and invite anybody in the audience uh, who, who fits this description to help me with a survey I'm doing. It's not a study. It's a survey. I am doing a survey of how people who are trans, trans women, trans men, or people of non-binary gender or intersex, how they experience their genitals. When in the trans, I use that as an umbrella term for all those categories, in the trans community, there and, and obviously we're seeing an explosion of trans awareness around the world uh, right now, especially in um, America, Europe, but I think everywhere, uh, there is often it is difficult for trans people to talk about their genitals for a lot of reasons. A couple of those reasons are people want to fetishize it. They're just interested in the freak factor, as my partner Kate Bornstein has, said, has called it. Or, uh, or a trans person is stuck trying to talk about their genitals to a medical professional or some sort of practitioner like that and being hopelessly misunderstood. So often trans people will talk about their genitals to each other, but then others will not. And many of us, frankly, don't get a chance to talk open, honestly, and frankly about how our genitals work, how we wish they work. We wonder if they work like other people's work. But there's a lot more information out there if you have an issue, a problem, a question about how your pussy works or how your penis works, and you are a cisgendered man or woman. There is some info out there. Often for trans people, there is very, very little. So I wanted to create, a, not a study, but a survey uh, about how hormones, hormones, surgery, attitude, life experience, wh wh what's up? What's up with that? <laughs> and then put it together in whatever way the survey tells us the community needs. Um, I want to feed the community back feed the information back to the trans community, but also to people who work with the trans community. This partially came out of um, discussions that trans women have been having, trans people have been having, uh, about relationships, about where do we, where is it safe to be in relationship with people who are not trans? And people who are attracted to trans people, and there actually are a lot more out there than we think, have been afraid to admit that because they're thought of, they, they think people will think they're freaky, or they think trans people will think that they're just fetishizing them. So there's a whole bunch of stuckness that's just beginning to be looked at. And I wanted to start a conversation about how we talk about sex when we do not fit some traditional model of what male or female looks like. So that this survey is still up and you can get to it at surveymonkey.com yeah. forward slash R, just the letter R, another forward slash transgen. So I'll say it again, surveymonkey.com slash R r slash transgen, T-R-A-N-S-G-E-N. So any of you out there who identify as trans man, trans woman, 
non-binary, gender queer, or trans in any way, shape, or form, please um, rock on over to that link and help us all out if you're so inclined, by filling out that survey. It is completely anonymous. And it'll be up probably for the rest of March or at least for a couple more weeks. And then we're looking forward, a a trans woman anthropologist is going to help me analyze the results. So um, you'll be, when we have those results, you'll be hearing me talk about them because I want the community to have that information. Beautiful. So that's my new project. Beautiful. Thank you so much for doing this call out for your survey. I I did uh, receive it and I um, did share it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah. So uh, Barbara is really uh, fabulous, as you can tell. And she has all these awesome um, books and content and training. So do check out her website, Barbara Corellas. And if you can just do a shout out for the survey, um, please do so. That's a surveymonkey.com backslash, forward slash, right? You said forward slash. Forward slash. R forward slash transgen. So yeah. this has been uh, Dr. Martha Tarali with uh, Barbara Corellas. And uh, next week, we have another guest. We are going to be talking about the yoni and the connection with our sexuality. And the title of next week's show is The Empowered Woman. So do tune in next week. <laughs>